When Amanda first told me that she was going to blog about death every day, my first reaction was, well, of course Amanda is going to spend a year blogging about a topic that most people in society in general are uncomfortable with. There wasn't a single blog post that was negative, that ended with the reader feeling sad, which, if you think about it, is kind of crazy. <laughs> it's a blog about death, yet you leave that blog feeling better. When I um, was uh, 22, uh, my dad was diagnosed with ALS, probably the second worst news I've ever gotten in my life, if I'm being honest. And reading about it was only worse, you know, looking into what, uh, what the disease is and the effects and, you know, there's no cure. During the pandemic, some of my students had experienced personal losses and we were watching funerals through a Zoom screen and I wanted to be able to be a teacher who was fully present to all these emotions and not shy away from them because of my own fears and phobias. Being interviewed about my dad's story was um, was interesting. You know, I think I shared things in a, in a different light and things uh, I, I have either never talked before or um, have, you know, been in the back of my mind that uh, have never been said. As a result of reading Amanda's blog, Dying to Meet You, um, in my classroom, I created an entire year-long curriculum um, that incorporated death and grief and healing. We had this sort of larger research project um, titled From Lab Coat to Sweatpants, and it was bridging the gap between science and empathy. So students went on an open hospital database to find a child's story. Scientifically, they researched their medical condition, um, and then they had to create sort of a storybook for the child that represented their story in a meaningful way so they could have representation. The Living Wish Foundation is a charity based in Canada that grants wishes for those in palliative care. And I, I learned about it through Amanda's blog. What really struck me is how simple the wishes were. Uh, when I was reading more into it, I learned about a man who wasn't able to go outside because he was in a wheelchair and his house did not have a ramp. And so the wish that was granted was just to build a ramp. <laughs> Very low cost, uh, yet it changed his life. So for my birthday that year, my brother and I did a fundraiser and we raised a bit over $3,000, which is not a lot, but we knew that the, you know, in spite of the small number, we were able to change people's lives. My um, friends and family saw the interview was um immediately <laughs> shared off and not just that just the entire ALS community uh, decided to take this blog and share it off as much as they could. What I liked best about Dying to Meet You was that Amanda explored death across time and place across different cultures and religious traditions. She brought in voices from nurses, um, Holocaust survivors and refugees. Death is natural. Death is something that we will all experience. Um, and it's important that we contemplate our death and even more so it's important to contemplate our death in a positive way, one with hope. Right? One thing me and my dad admired was J.R. Tolkien and a quote I, I continue uh, and me and my family have kind of coined is, does a story ever have to end? I suppose not. It's up to us to carry on the story which is exactly what uh, we have to do because these stories are important and so powerful.